The fact that mosquitoes are responsible for transmitting malaria was established through the pages of the BMJ, through the work of two rather different characters, Ronald Ross, who won the Nobel Prize for his work, and Patrick Manson, who really tipped him off as to the facts. It's a particularly remarkable paper in the BMJ in 1900 by Manson, who wanted to transmit this message about mosquitoes and malaria to the general public, and that involved infecting his own son and his laboratory assistant with mosquitoes that were imported for the purpose from Italy. People observed both the ordinary population as well as scientists, a very clear association between stagnant swamps, marshes, and a disease that by the 18th century was known as malaria, bad air from the Italian. But the identification of the link between the disease with mosquitoes is not made till much later in the 19th century. From time immemorial, it had been really uh, felt that mosquitoes were involved, but there was no scientific proof, you see. That that's where Ross came into it. He established beyond doubt in his studies at uh, Secunderabad in India and then in Calcutta that the mosquito was involved. How much of this story plays out in the pages of the BMJ in the archive? Well, certainly the, the malaria story of Ronald Ross and Manson is absolutely fascinating. And I think the discovery that mosquitoes transmit malaria uh, was Ronald Ross. But Manson had already worked out that mosquitoes transmitted filaria. And when I started looking at the BMJ articles about malaria, I kept reading that Manson has this hunch that mosquitoes might transmit malaria. And Ross meets Manson, and Manson persuades Ross to, to explore this possible connection. He and Manson start up a correspondence, so there are letters. And Manson also, in some of the BMJ articles, refers to Ross's exchanges with him. And you see over those years the frustration, because Ross cannot find the parasites in the mosquitoes. Um, and then Mosquito Day, he realises at that point that he's been using the wrong type of mosquito <laughs> and he has the dapple wing mosquitoes which are probably Anopheles and, uh, and that's his eureka moment. The editor of the BMJ, a chap called Hart in those days, was extremely keen on this newly developing discipline and a tremendous number of these discoveries in the exotic diseases associated with the tropics were therefore published in the British Medical Journal. There's a wonderful article by Manson in which he describes some of the experiments. Being anxious to see some fruit from a theory which I knew to be true, and for which I was in a measure responsible, I cast about for means by which the conversion and cooperation of the public might be secured. What he did was he sent George Carmichael Lowe and a chap called Sambon and uh, Terzi to the Roman Campania, where there was a lot of Vivax malaria at the time. They go to a highly endemic place near Ostia in Italy. They want to verify the mosquito malaria hypothesis. What they did was to live normal lifestyles during the day, but during the night hours they were in a mosquito-proof hut. The only protection against mosquito bite and fever employed by the experimenters was wire screens in doors and windows and mosquito nets around the beds. And their experiment works because they do not contract malaria where all the other people, the agricultural workers, labourers, are coming down with the fevers. They enjoyed perfect health in marked contrast to their neighbours. So this for them is, is fantastic proof. The second piece of evidence was that a batch of Vivax uh, infected mosquitoes um, were sent from Rome. If I fed laboratory reared mosquitoes on a malarial patient in a distant country and subsequently carried the mosquitoes to the centre of London and there set them to bite some healthy individual. And if this individual developed malarial fever, the conclusion that malaria is conveyed by the mosquito would be evident to every understanding. The Italian sense of mosquitoes is a wonderful description of, of the way these mosquitoes are sent from Rome. When the insects had fed, 
Dr. Sambam placed them in small cylindrical cages made of mosquito netting stretched on a wire frame. Four such cylinders were packed in a well-ventilated box and forwarded through the British Embassy in Rum to the London School of Tropical Medicine. They are carrying benign tertian malaria because the more deadly form, falciparum malaria, would be too risky. By courtesy of the Postmaster General, they came forward by the Indian Mail, so that they arrived in London some 48 hours after leaving Rome. A fair proportion survived and appeared to be healthy and vigorous. So a shipment of mosquitoes arrives at the London School of Tropical Medicine. Well, they were in fact fed on Manson's son and the laboratory technician. The experimenter has merely to lay the closed cage in his damped hand. There's a description by Manson's son of his symptoms. I fed five of them on August 29th and three on August 31st. They bit my fingers and hands readily. The bites were followed by a considerable amount of irritation. On the morning of the 13th, I rose feeling languid and out of sorts with a temperature of 99 degrees Fahrenheit. At 4.30, I went to bed with a severe headache, lassitude, pains in the back and bones, and a temperature of 101.4. At 10 a.m. on September 17th, several half-grown parasites, a gamete, and two pigmented leukocytes were discovered in the first film of my blood examined. Their presence was verified by my father, Dr. Frederick Taylor, Lieutenant Colonel Oswald Baker, Dr. Galloway, Mr. Watson Cheney, uh, and they, they both developed malaria, you see, um, which was ultimately cured with Would quinine. Would they pass the ethics committees these days? I don't think so, no. <laughs> September 18th, 10 grains of quinine were taken. September 25th, I was in good health, no recurrence of malarial symptoms. But later in life, Ross uh, became very critical of Manson and you know, fell out with him in a big way. But Ross was a very difficult sort of character. And of course, it was Ross who won the Nobel Prize and, and yeah, Manson and didn't. Manson did not, not, yes, quite. Uh, reading between lines, I think uh, Manson was a very nice sort of bloke, really. He was, he was a good, solid uh, uh, physician. And Ross actually threatened to sue him at one stage, which was absolutely outrageous because Manson was his mentor and uh, he put him on to all of the malaria work which made him famous and for which he got the Nobel Prize and so on. I, I think it's um, remarkable and laudable that this country took such a lead in the development of uh, tropical medicine as a discipline and invested in the subject in the tropics. Yeah, but it was principally to look after the service of empire and Raj rather than the indigenous populations. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. You know, it has flowed over to the indigenous populations now, but um, as it was established, uh, they were only interested in, uh, for political reasons, in looking after the service of empire and Raj. And of course, malaria is still a, a terrible scourge, despite all these different approaches, the effectiveness of, of bed nets some success in eliminating the insect, but still what, uh, a million children a year are dying? They say something like uh, a million to three million children a year. An off-quoted statistic is that every 30 seconds a child dies of malaria. 300 to 500 million people infected. The huge burden is in Africa. There's one good hope with malaria at the moment. There's a vaccine on trial, very exciting, and there's a Chinese drug, a weed, Artemisia annua, which goes back thousands of years and is now combined with other anti-malarials, it's, it's really proving to be a very, very effective drug.